Now, first thing to do, just quickly go over here and you can find the Polar Grid tool just beneath the Align Segment tool. So, Polar Grid tool, just there. Okay, once you've actually got the Polar Grid tool, just double click it and you'll see various options. You've got default size, concentric divider, radial dividers. Now, default is five and five. You can change that, of course. You can just set that, say, like to 20, so you can get more circles than uh, and radial device. Personally, never use the skew features, and they work slightly odd anyway. So it's one of the areas I, I happen to avoid. But uh, you can also skew the concentric dividers as well, as well as the radial dividers. Now, once you've actually set the values you want there, and I'm going to go for 20 and 5 there, just quickly add it like that. And there, hold down the shift to make it, or you can just use it as an ellipse. So just do that as well. Now, once you've actually got that, you can see at this point, it's actually got no settings. So you can actually set the color to make if you want it all with a solid fill and do that. You can also obviously not set that because it just doesn't particularly make much sense. You can actually just go over here and use the stroke. So you can set the stroke and you can set the size, something like that. Now, you can of course apply and modify that beforehand. So you can say maybe at five and then apply it say in red. So again, just click there and then apply the design. So you can see now red and you've got 20 and you've got five radial there. Okay, so once you've actually got that, of course, you might want something different. You might not want 20. So you can actually go back, just press return while well, you've got that selected. So keep that selected, press return, and it will bring up the options as well. So you can set that to say 10 and radial dividers, you can set to 10 as well. Click OK and then apply like that. You can also just obviously just select there and just apply it. Just click and you can see you can modify the default size. So say make it 500, 500, click OK and it will always generate that as well. Just very simple. You don't actually have to draw it out. It will actually apply it unless you unfortunately make it very small by just accidentally drawing that size and then of course when you go back into that you'll see it set to the default size down to 16. You'd think it actually would just keep it the same 200, 200 but or whatever. So you can just set it like that. Now once you've actually got the actual design and I'm going to remove those now. That's probably the, the easiest way. You can of course make it without the radial or concentric. So you can actually just go Press that and say, say, set that to zero and radial dividers, and that will just generate very basic paths with the actual slices. Now, you can, it's just a path, a standard path, which you can just go to object and ungroup. So you can then just ungroup that, move that over there, and you've got these very simple radial dividers, which you can, of course, move around, modify. You can apply various, just various. Things like here, the width profiles, as well as changing the size as well, maybe apply it to brush, just add that. So you can see you've got design there. Now, just going to remove that, remove that as well. Going to go back to the original, make it 10 and 10. Click OK and then drag that out. As I say, you can change the color so you can make that like that. Now, you can actually fill these in. So if you actually want to say, go over here and turn around and say, Live paint bucket, just select that, save, set that to blue, and you just go there very rapidly, go through that, and change the color, and make a very colorful random design. So you can just change the color there, double click that, and just then go through and add colors there. What you can do once you've actually got that, of course, if you're happy with that design, drag that into the library. You can, of course, also save it as a swatch. So you can just quickly drag that open to swatches, and add that as a swatch. As you can see it just there. Now, you can also go to symbol and symbols there and just quickly drag that into symbols as well. So you can just click OK and it will be saved there as a symbol. And of course then, if you've got a symbol there, just click there and just use the sprayer tool, symbol sprayer tool, and you can just apply the symbols very rapidly there. Okay. Now, just going to move that, go back to the design that was creating. 
So once you've actually got that, you can also maybe add a clipping mask. So you don't have to have the entire thing. You can distort it as well. Just go to object and various envelope distort, make good warp. So you can warp the design, use arc flag. Like I say, also you can use clipping mask. So just go there, select a very basic shape, star, circle, whatever, or a rectangle, and just time that. Select both there. So you've got both of those, you've got the polar grid and the actual, and then object, and then just go down clipping mask and make. So you can make that into a clipping mask. Just very, very simple design. So you don't actually see the entire design. Of course, then you can modify it with various tools here. Create some very interesting sort of warp design. So you can just apply the warp. You don't have to keep it as a actual polar grid. And you can just sort of distort it and create some very, very abstract shapes that maybe drag it out maybe just distort it say in the direction from the actual center now another thing you can do you can actually create the design you don't have to create just one you I mean you can actually create obviously more than two well two three four five hold the alt down or you could of course just create another one over there that's another thing. change the color that's another thing you can do just go there and change that so you can overlap them and make designs like that just by very simple effects like that. Another thing, you can just go over here and create design and apply effects. So maybe have it like 3D, extrude and bevel, and then just go for preview and you can see you can rotate it. Some work better than others in the actual design. It's create some very nice 3D designs for the polar grid as well. So that's polar grid. I mean, there's probably thousands more things you can do. Maybe add gradients to it. You can add other effects, use it. Of course, another thing, just copy it over into Photoshop and use it in Photoshop. Maybe export it, just save it to a file and then use it in, say, After Effects or use it in Critter and other applications. So that's a whole range of things with Polar Grids. Really worth checking out. Got loads and loads of tutorials about Polar Grids on the Graphic Extras website, graphicextras.com, and also got lots of other tutorials about whole range of different tools you can see here various live paint etc paintbrush blob brush there's a whole tutorials about that and also some of these other tools so various warping tools bloat scalp etc all on the graphic extras website always adding new tutorials as well hope you found this of interest thank you very much